Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We are starting a new course from this video on generative AI. It is just a crash course covering some basics of generative models and we will build a small project by the end of this course. In this particular video, we will discuss about generative AI and few applications. So what is generative AI? Generative AI is a combination of deep learning computer vision and natural language processing. If you look at this chart, you can see over the years how different fields have evolved. It started with a broad category of artificial intelligence. Then after few years, machine learning techniques got evolved. And then we saw deep learning era. And along with deep learning, there are few application areas evolved using deep learning techniques in natural language processing and computer vision. And now it is the time of Generative AI. Generative AI evolved from deep learning. Computer vision and natural language processing are the fields where the major generative AI models have been developed. So what exactly is generative AI? The machine learning and deep learning algorithms developed so far are majorly used for solving the problems. Basically those are two categories of problems, classification and regression. Any machine learning model or deep learning model is majorly used for solving one of these problems. But generative AI is used to generate content or generate new data. It is just a set of algorithms or models that can generate content. In classification and regression, you are not generating any new content. The models are used to solve a problem given the data. But in generative AI, we are generating the content. In simple terms, generative AI generates the data similar to the data that is trained on. There are different models under generative AI catering to different types of data generation. So when we say data generation, it can range from text to video. So there are models which can generate text. There are models which can generate images and videos. And there are models which can generate audio files as well. Also, there are many models which can generate all of this. We call such kind of models as multimodal data. That means that a single model can generate different types of data. Let us see an example. This is one example of generating text. I asked Copilot to create a bedtime story and it has created this bedtime story. This story is completely fictional created by Copilot. So the backend model is GPT-4 or GPT-4 Turbo, some model. I just asked to create a bedtime story and it has created this total plot. So this is very interesting. And similarly, it can create videos and images as well, right? There are models which can create images and videos. One such example is DALI. DALI is a model from OpenAI. This is used basically for creating images. You ask what kind of image you need, it will generate the image for you. So these are couple of examples of generative AI creating new content. The story which we saw before and even this photo, these are not real. These are generated fictional entries. Okay. Now let us briefly look at the architecture and evolution of generative AI. If you can see here, there are models which can generate content from around 1980s. For example, auto encoders are deep learning models which are used to recreate the given image. So these models are usually U-shaped architecture where you give the input image and you ask the model to recreate the image as simple as that. And these kind of models are used for segmentation tasks as well. One such model is UNIT. Similarly, variational autoencoders and generative adversarial networks, all these models came as an evolution from autoencoders. So generative adversarial networks are majorly used for creating synthetic data set. So these models are used for creating data for training an actual deep learning model. So this generation of data or content has been there from some time. But the major breakthrough happened in 2017 with the arrival of transformers architecture. It's a unique architecture introduced for natural language processing tasks. Majorly transformers are used for machine translation. That means translating one language to another language or summarization of a particular paragraph, question answering, these kind of tasks in natural language processing. So this has come as an improvement or you can say replacement of RNNs and LSTMs in natural language processing. So this transformer 
architecture is the major backbone for all of the GPT models or Llama models or Gemini models, whatever you call it. All of these generative AI models, they use transformers architecture as the backbone. So based on this transformer architecture, all these kind of models started coming from 2018. So in simple terms, these generative AI models or architectures are very big architectures compared to deep learning models. They are huge in number of parameters, so they can handle large chunks of data. These generative AI model development initially started in natural language processing and then later it has been extended to computer vision and other fields. So these are some of the latest models. I would say not very latest. GPT-40 is the latest. These are slightly older models, GPT-4 and GPT-4 Turbo. Similarly, Llama, Gemini, there are many versions coming up. So the models are evolving over the time from the last two, three years. So there are many more open source models apart from this. So majorly the big companies have started creating these kind of models. Major companies like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, all of these companies have started building their own generative AI models. And there are companies like OpenAI and others. They started providing services based on subscription model. So one such example is ChatGPT. We use ChatGPT in and out. So generative AI is not very new concept. It's just that we got more computing power and we got more data and we got a new type of architecture which is capable of handling more data. So the combination of all of this, we are able to solve much harder problems. This is similar to the deep learning evolution. So before the evolution of deep learning, we don't have the infrastructure to deal with large models or large data sets. So that was the limitation then. And when we cracked that infrastructure, basically when the GPUs came up, deep learning saw an exponential growth. Similarly, now we have the infrastructure to handle billions of parameters. So we are building much bigger models which can handle huge data. And that is the main reason for the performance or the accuracy of the generative AI models. In simple terms, these are nothing but machine learning or deep learning models, but can handle large amount of data and solve much more complex tasks. That's it. So generative AI models can be used to solve problems in many domains. We'll look at few application areas where generative AI is being used now. Basically, it is creating new content, right? So whether it is text or video or audio, it doesn't matter. Generative AI is majorly used for creating new content. So if you broadly categorize the applications, they fall into these use cases. Either it is music creation or text creation, image creation or video creation or chatbots. Chatbots also come under text creation or image creation. Basically, the generative AI models have a broader or wider context range. That means it can understand any general topic which is available over the internet. These models have been trained with huge amount of data available all over the internet. So these models act as an encyclopedia. So this is where they are different from the traditional machine learning or deep learning models. Traditional machine learning or deep learning models are specific for a particular application and they can solve a particular task, but they don't have the general knowledge as these generative AI models. Now let's look at few examples in each category. Let us start with text creation. So this is the origin of generative AI models. Generative AI models initially started for generating text or question answering purposes. So you all know ChatGPT, right? So ChatGPT is not exactly a model. It is just an interface to use generative AI models. So it's just a chatbot. The models behind the ChatGPT are GPT-40, GPT-4 Turbo, etc. So ChatGPT is an interface where you can chat like you are chatting with a human and you ask questions. In the back end, these models will run and they give you the response. Similar tools are there from Google, Facebook, all of them. I'll show one example where Copilot is being used. There is an application built by GitHub, which is GitHub Copilot. Basically, it is used for helping the software engineers. It can create code. It can review your code. It can modify the code. It can convert the code from one language to another language, etc. Internally, the model can be GPT-40, 
but it is tweaked to handle the coding tasks. Okay, so this is one such example. So you just give a prompt in the GitHub Copilot. So it can be used as a VS Code extension. So this is a VS Code IDE and you just give a prompt. It will start creating the code. In this example, I asked to implement PCA from scratch using NumPy and it creates the whole code by itself. Similarly, you can convert the code from one language to another language. So this is an example for converting the binary search code into Python. Okay, so it's basically a JavaScript code and it is asked to convert to Python and it is able to do that. So Copilot is very useful and it actually speeds up your coding process and you need not to go to Google to search for any logics or any implementations. You can just ask in your IDE itself and you will get the code block. You can just copy paste and start using it. So this is a very good application of generative AI. Similarly, there is very interesting application which is actually talking with your database. So this can be for SQL or no SQL databases. What you usually do is if you want to retrieve any information from the database, you write an SQL query or Postgres query, depending on the type of your database. And that needs a specific skill. But now you can directly get this information by just asking in plain English. This is just talking to a person to give you some data and you can directly get the data. So how does this work? On a high level, a generative AI model is used for creating an SQL query based on the user question. I ask something in the plain English and it creates an equivalent SQL query. And then that query will be run against the database and it gets some data. Once it fetched the data from the database, it converts the data into plain English for the user. Because I don't understand as a user, I don't understand the tabular format or some other things, but I can understand the plain English. I asked in English, I need the response in English. Here, the generative AI model is used in the beginning where it is pre-processing and converting the English to SQL query. And in the end where you get the response from the database, you convert that response into equivalent understandable format for the user. So this application is very interesting because you don't need a special skill to get information from the database. Suppose you are working as a manager and you want to get some information to put it on a deck. This kind of tool comes very handy because you can get the information very quickly and you can use that in your deck. And similarly, there are many tools which can generate the visualizations as well. You want to create a bar chart from the data it fetched or you want to create a pie chart or you want to create a dashboard. There are such tools which can create that, that kind of visualizations. Internally, they will all generate an equivalent code and then run that code in the IDE or in the environments. But you don't need to do all of that. You just need to ask in plain English. So you can see one such example here. So these are dashboards. You can ask what do you want and it will actually create that for you. So in this example, you can see now the prompt here, change the date granularity to month wise, right? And I need color coding by the region. Also change the chart to vertical stacked bar graph. And I asked this in plain English. It will convert this particular graph into that format. So you can see how it worked. And this is possible because of generative AI models. And the next application is intelligent chatbot. So chatbots have been there from long time, but usually chatbots are basically a predefined responses recorded in the backend. And any question you ask, it will try to match it to the nearest response and give it to you. But now with the generative AI models, the chatbots have become more intelligent. It can actually understand what you are asking, in which context you are asking that question. And it tries to give you more personalized answers rather than a predefined response. Okay. Similarly, there are many models which can generate images or art creation. Let's see an example in Dolly. So I'm in chat GPT. I'm asking to create an image of a dog wearing specs and walking on the beach. So let's see if it gives that image. Yeah, it's not very realistic because it's a generated image, but you can see that you can understand it's a dog and it's wearing specs and it is walking in the beach, right? 
Similarly, there are many other companies which are using generative AI for creating these images and they provide these as a service. And then we have video creation. So video creation is a little bit complex compared to image and text. Text is pretty easy. Uh, images and videos are a little bit complex. Sora is one such model created by OpenAI team for video creation. So let us look at that model once. So this is the website of Sora OpenAI and all these videos are generated by the model. So you can see the prompt here. This is the prompt used and this is the video it has generated. Similarly, there are many more videos like that. Right? So these are all the videos generated by computer in simple terms. And these are very realistic videos as well. So that's all. These are some of the applications. Many companies have come up in this field using generative AI models to provide some solutions. Hope you have learned something from this video and found this video interesting. In the next video, we will look at the generative AI models in the context of natural language processing. Thank you.